by hand From mighty mountains to the raging sea To every leaf on every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look The 12 tribes of Israel were led out of Egypt by Moses. God had promised them a home of their own, a land called Canaan. But once they got there, many Israelites were afraid of the armies of Canaan. they didn't trust God to help them win their battles. They wanted to go back to Egypt where they had been slaves. God decided that since they didn't trust him, they couldn't enter the promised land, and he had them wander the deserts for 40 years. After 40 years, God led the children of the 12 tribes back to the promised land. But instead of it being a time of joy, the Israelites were full of sadness. Their leader Moses had died, so they didn't have anyone to lead them to their new home. Boys, behave yourselves. Today we are remembering Moses. Joshua, who helped Moses for those 40 years, was remembering the great leader in his own special way. <gasps> Come to cheer me up, Turnip. <sighs> what will happen to our people now that Moses is gone? Who will guide us to the promised land? Why not you, Joshua? Turn it. You, you, you talked. It's me, Joshua. God? I've chosen you, Joshua, to lead the Israelites into the promised land. No, I can't. You helped Moses. But he was a great leader. I'm just an ordinary man, a simple servant. Don't be afraid. There is greatness in every man who has faith, Joshua. God, where is the land you promised us? Look west. What do you see? The desert floor and the Jordan River. Beyond that, foothills and green. The promised land. Take your people, Joshua. But I can't lead them. I'm frightened. Yes, you will face many dangers, but be strong. Remember, I will never leave you. Because Joshua loved God and obeyed his rules, God protected him. God's rules, known as the Ten Commandments, were written on stone tablets inside the Holy Ark. The river's very swift. Crossing won't be easy. Oh, this is foolish. <laughs> Following Joshua as if he were Moses. 
Are you coming, Aram? Come, let's see what will happen. How about there, Joshua? I'll see how deep it is. Do you think you can cross it, little one? Oh, come on, it's just a little water. No! Oh! <laughs> You! Go away! <gasps> I am Joshua, leader of the Israelites. God has promised us this land. <laughs> Did he? Well, I'm the king of Jericho, and you can't enter. We are protected by this swift river and the strongest wall in the world. If you can cross this river, you better be prepared for a fight. Our God protects us, as he protected Moses, our leader. <laughs> yes, I've heard that your God parted the Red Sea, but he has no power here. Stay away from Jericho, or my army will destroy you. What do we do, Joshua? Have faith and cross the river when God tells us to. You heard Joshua. Let's tell the others. <clears throat> I'm worried about this king of Jericho. He's like the waters of this river. Dangerous. Joshua. Yes, God? Don't be afraid of the king. If you trust me, I will protect you. Joshua did trust in God. He selected two men to sneak into Jericho and tell him about the king's army. One, two, three soldiers. Uh, that third one is tiny. I'll only count him as half a soldier. Aram! We're spies. That means we have to be quiet. Go oh, quiet. Right. Spy! Oh, King, I'm only a harmless traveling merchant. Liar! You're a stranger in Jericho, so I say you're a spy! Hey! Shh. But he can't do that! More spies! Israelite spies! That's being quiet! Catch them! Stop the spies! Catch the Israelites! They must be here somewhere! My name's Rahab. I want to help. This way. Under here. Quickly. Open your doors! By order of the king! Out of my way! The Israelite spies! Did you see them? They were here, but they ran toward the city gates. If you hurry, you might still catch them. The king will be very unhappy if you let them get away. Mm. 
Rahab told the Israelites it was safe to come out of their hiding place. That was a very brave thing you did. Why did you risk your life for us, two strangers? Everyone in Jericho knows the Israelites are coming to our land. We've heard that your God rules the heavens above and the earth below. He's so powerful. He parted the Red Sea for Moses. Now our men are afraid to fight you. Go, hide in the hills for three days. Then you'll be safe. God bless you, Rahab. You're very kind. Wait. I showed kindness to you. When your people attack the city, please spare my family and me. We promise, Rahab. Leave this red rope hanging from your window. It will be a sign that no one in this house is to be harmed. Joshua's spies did as Rahab had said. After hiding in the mountains for three days, they ran back to camp with their report. That's what Rahab told us, Joshua. Everyone in Jericho is afraid of us. We can defeat this king of Jericho. I'm not so sure, Aram. He had a lot of soldiers. Ah, they were all small. Let's pray to God and thank him. He has done as he said. The promised land is ours. The next day, the 12 tribes marched towards Canaan. But as God had told Joshua, entering their new homeland wasn't going to be easy. How can we cross this river safely? Please, God, give me an answer. The water's too fast. No. It's too fast. I'm not going to No, no. no. How will we get our children and animals across? Don't be afraid. God has shown me a way. Bring out the Ark of the Covenant. Joshua directed the priests to carry the Ark into the river and hold it there. The Israelites were confused what did Joshua have in mind? This can't be safe. Joshua doesn't know what he's doing. Behold, the power of God. As the crowd watched, a miracle happened. <gasps> the priests held up the ark, and God held back the waters. It's just like when Moses parted the Red Sea. It's true then. God must be with Joshua, as he was with Moses. The Israelites' faith in Joshua grew and grew, for now they knew he followed in the footsteps of Moses. Joshua, choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them to get 12 rocks from the middle of the river from where the priest stood. Carry the rocks and put them down where you stay tonight. In the future, your children will ask, what do these rocks mean? And you will say, the water stopped flowing when the Ark of the Covenant with God crossed the river. These rocks will always remind the Israelites of this.
One evening, Joshua was walking near Jericho. I've followed God's commands without question. I've tried to be a good leader, but I'm not a soldier. How can I fight the king of Jericho and his army? Joshua. God, how shall the enemy be defeated? You won't need swords or armor, Joshua. Just have faith in me. To defeat the king and army of Jericho, here's what you must do. Early the next day, Joshua formed the Israelites into a long line. Remember, do as God instructed. Not a word, not a sound from any of you. First came seven priests playing ram's horns. Then the Ark of the Covenant. Then the armed men. They marched one time around the great city. Hmm, this is not fighting. <laughs> this is a parade. Well, I, I guess we won. <laughs> When do we attack the city, Joshua? We don't. Tomorrow we march around it again. Oh, <sighs> and just like today, everyone must be quiet. No shouts of war. The only sounds can come from the ram's horns. So the Israelites marched once around Jericho. every day for six days. And for six days, nothing happened. You Israelites are fools! And the biggest fool is your leader, Joshua! <laughs> On the morning of the seventh day, Joshua's people were restless. Joshua, you do not know what you are doing. Our people are tired of marching in circles. We need a soldier for a leader. Yes, let's fight. You're right. I'm not a soldier, but I do have faith in God. He didn't let Moses down and he won't let us down so long as we trust in him. This is the seventh and last day. Who will come with me? I will. All of us. Tell everyone we will march. And march they did. But instead of going around the city just once, as they had done for six full days, Joshua said that God wanted them to march seven times. And on the seventh time around, they did something completely different. Shout, yell, scream, so that the heavens can hear you. Shout, for God has given us Jericho. Yeah! We wandered through the desert sand, hoping we could find God's promised land. And now it's here before us, behind a fortress tall. But it will not be ours until we bring down the walls. Bring down the walls of Jericho. Bring down the walls. Lift your horns and blow. The sound we make is gonna shake. City to the ground, we'll see the promised land when the walls come down. We believe in God that He 
is with us here. His power is much greater than that army over there. Our enemies are laughing, but their kingdom soon will fall. When we raise our voices, we will bring down the walls. Bring down the walls of Jericho. Bring down the walls. Lift your horns and blow. The sound we make is going to shake the city to the ground. We'll see the promised land. Shout out loud, shout out strong That wall around the city won't keep us out for long Sing to God, one and all That land that we were promised is right behind those walls Bring down the walls With their voices, a few ram's horns, and their faith in God, the Israelites captured Jericho. Joshua, these are the people who helped us, Rahab, her mother and father. You're a brave woman, Rahab. God has watched over you and your family because of your faith and for helping my people. Can we stay and join you, Joshua? Nothing would make me happier. Don't touch me, Israelite. How dare you treat me this way? Why, I'm, I'm the king. You were the king. When I said God promised us this land, you laughed and called me a fool. Who's the fool now? You can't, no. no! Has anyone seen Turnip? For you. <laughs> Perfect. My friends, our days of wandering are over. We're home. After Jericho was captured, the Israelites kept moving and claimed more and more new land. Their wandering days were over, all because Joshua and the Israelites had faith in God. A long time ago, Jesus traveled the land teaching people how to be good to each other and to love God. Many people listened and learned from his stories, but some didn't understand and had questions. What are you doing, Jesus? 
You are sitting with sinners. How can you be a teacher sent by God if you speak to tax collectors? These men take our money and give it to the Emperor. We've even heard you eat with these men. They have turned their backs on God. I'm sure God will have nothing to do with them. Why should you? All people are special to God. Let me tell you a story. Once there was a shepherd with a hundred sheep, but he lost one of them. Jesus told how the shepherd wanted all of his lambs safe. He looked and looked. Until one day, The shepherd had a big celebration because he had found what he had lost. But Jesus, the shepherd, was just doing his job. There's more joy in heaven over someone who was lost and then found, who changes his life for God, than over 99 people who don't need to change. Jesus then told about a woman who had 10 silver coins. But she lost one of them. When the woman discovered she had lost the one coin, she was very upset. She spent the whole night looking for her lost coin. She told her friends and they celebrated. Because she had found what she had lost. That's the way God feels about people. In heaven, the angels sing whenever a person says he or she believes in God and wants to live a better life. But Jesus, in your stories, the shepherd and the poor woman lost valuable things. And all sinners, especially tax collectors, are worthless bad people. There's another story. A story about forgiveness and love. There was once a man who was both a wealthy farmer and a loving father. <laughs> the father tried to teach them how to take care of things. Thank you, Reuben, but where is your...
Ah, Benjamin. Even though his sons were very different, he loved them both the same. The father hoped they would grow up to be hard-working farmers. But as the younger son grew up, he dreamed of distant places. He didn't want to stay on his father's farm. The son decided to leave his home the very next day. Father, I had a wonderful dream last night. Really? What kind of... I was riding the finest horse in the city. Oh, the well, city's a nice place to visit, but... Everyone stared at me because I was handsome, smart, and wealthy. Yes, you are all of those. Father, farm life is fine for you. You're a farmer, but it's not for me. There are things I have to do. Places I have to see. <gasps> You're leaving home? Yes, you have always promised my brother and me an inheritance. Money for us. But it's for your future. Oh, please, Father. I want my money now. I must see the world, starting today. But the father did not want his son to leave. He would miss him a great deal. Thank you, Father. I'm rich! Hey, that's not fair. Benjamin can't take his money and leave like this. <sighs> if that's what he wants, he can do it. Don't worry about the farm, Father. Reuben will be here. But I care about you. I'll miss you, my son. I'll be all right. I'm going to see the world. Wave goodbye to your brother. The father could only hope that one day he'd see his son again. No more dirty hands, no more back aches, and no more work. Isn't it magnificent? It was the son's first time out in the world, and he wanted to buy everything he saw. Well, what do you think? Now all I need is to be seen riding a magnificent horse. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. You have bought the finest horse in my stable. Well, I deserve the best, you know. Uh, do you want that mule anymore? He reminds me of my father's farm. 
None of my horses are worth 40 coins. Why, this mule is worth twice that much. <laughs> the fool doesn't care how he spends his money. I see something else to buy. I don't care what it costs. I must be seen riding through the streets today. Father, I've listed all of our animals. Thanks, Reuben. That was a lot of work. Uh, I was just thinking about your brother. I'm sure you miss him as much as I do. The son was still spending money. He hadn't learned his lesson yet. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. I have customers waiting. I beg your pardon, sir. How about a big fluffy pillow? The boy still only thought about himself. Ladies and gentlemen, for your dining pleasure, be Ira and his funny monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I must have that monkey! <laughs> wow! Excuse me, sir, but you have stayed here for a week. Will you pay your bill? Oh, is money all you want? Uh-oh. Out. Get out of my inn. <laughs> this will pay for your bills. Benjamin was now alone and very hungry. What am I going to do? For the first time in his life, the son had to beg for food. Ah, uh, no free food? The boy was so hungry, he needed to find work, any work. But the only job he could find was the worst possible. Watch it! Don't make, well, pigs of yourselves. Oh, I'm so hungry. <sighs> Thanks, little pig. Been 
acting so foolishly. A pigsty is fine, if you're a pig. But it's not for me. At my father's farm, everyone, even the helpers, have a place to sleep, enough to eat. Wait a minute. I'll go home. Well, father won't want me back as a son, not after the way I treated him. But anything's better than this mess. Hey, he, he might give me a job on his farm. I'm never going to snap my fingers like that ever again. So the son decided to go home, and he hoped that his father would not send him away. Thank God, he's come back. Sir, your son is coming home. Benjamin, my son is back? <laughs> my brother is back. This is a very bad idea. My father won't even want to talk to me. Uh-oh. Too late. Is he going to be mad? Father, I'm sorry for leaving, and now I only ask to work in your fields. I shouldn't even be called your son anymore. Ah! <laughs> oh, welcome. Oh, welcome home. I'm so happy you're safe. What? Let's have a big party. Father? Uh, I don't understand. You send for food, lots of food, and get some musicians. <laughs> My son has returned home. But the older son was jealous of his brother. Whoa! Out of my way. Tell me, is the banner hanging straight? No, it's all wrong. Everything's wrong. The father welcomed his last son back home. And the son realized how much his father loved him. Lost my way, left my house when I had it made. Just a slave to a broken heart till I found my father's open arms. Feels so good to be home again. No more roaming the world like the wind. I won't go back to where I've been. Feels so good to be home again. Feels so good to be home. My boy is back, yes it's true Set the table, prepare the food Watch me dance, bless this day So good to know he's home to stay My lost son is home again No more roaming the world like the wind I don't care where he's been My lost son is here Son is home again. I never thought my father would welcome back a boy like me. Now I can hardly believe the celebration feast. My lost son is home again. No more roaming the world like the wind. I don't no. care. So good to be home again No more roaming the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feels so good 
to be home again. My last son is home again. Where's Reuben? We can't celebrate without him. Benjamin's party. I won't go. It's not fair. Father, I stayed with you and helped you with the farm, but you never gave me a party. But as soon as my lazy brother wanders back home, he gets a feast. My son, anytime you want a party, you'll get it. Huh? I love you with all my heart, but today is something special. Your brother has returned. Like the tree we planted when you both were little. In the winter it's empty and you might think it's dead, but in the spring it comes back to life. I'm happy because I thought my son was dead, but he's alive, and now he's safe here with us. Come, celebrate with me. I've been a thoughtless brother. Can you ever forgive me? <laughs> Welcome home, brother. The father is like God. He is full of joy and forgiveness when someone decides to follow him. No matter what we have done, who we are, God will always love us. Bah! We are not convinced. God even forgives the Pharisees. Everyone else listened as Jesus told more stories that day, and they learned how God treasures every child, every man, and every woman. <laughs>